Då spelar vi in. Så so, uh, I say welcome to Tobias Olsson and hey. Fredrik Algren. Ja, oh, hej, hej, so, thank you, thank you. I've asked these these uh, researchers uh, to join me uh, in a discussion on what makes a good thesis, a bachelor thesis. Uh, so, what makes a good bachelor thesis in your opinion? Yes, one that gets finished. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's a good start. <laughs> okay, so I, I think that is good advice, um, <laughs> and that's finish. that's all for today. <laughs> so, what what are the indications that a that a thesis? I mean, in the beginning of a thesis, because these students are just trying to figure out what the, what to do, and uh, what what could be indications of a thesis in the beginning that it can be finished. Well, I think mm, pretty a pretty solid idea of what's supposed to be done without too many unknowns. You, you, you will need some unknown because you have a question, of course, but there cannot be too many unknowns around this question because that accumulates risk for you. And the risk is that some of these assumptions that you make are not valid or true and then everything falls down. For example, uh, we are doing some kind of uh, uh, interviews with with developers and we want to do five interviews because that would would give us good good validity for our thesis, but time runs out, we only four developers could or, or only two developers could could actually do the interview the company got a lot to do suddenly and stuff like that so okay uh, so risks kind of like risk management yeah right yeah yeah but risk management management can also like a part of that is planning your that you should have oh. a backup plan yeah so if, if this doesn't happen i mean what what's the backup plan yeah so and I think those those things are important to talk mm. with your supervisor with. So mm. that okay, what what happens if if you're doing an interview study? What happens if we don't get any responses? Mm. What's the backup plan? Mm. Um, so a lot of planning in the in the beginning. Yeah, at least thinking about what could go mm. wrong here. Mm. What am I kind of like yeah. assuming that will happen? And this can be also in programming. Mm. I'm assuming that I will be able to implement this flawlessly in mm. one week. Okay, so but it takes five weeks, and yeah. But I would say a bit of creativity in that. I mean, you need to you need to use your like um, imagination. Mm. I think mm. to to okay, and wh what will go wrong? It will go wrong. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it always does uh, in some way, more or less. Mm. Uh, but uh, I think in my experience, like uh, if you have um, an, an an open mind of of being able to change your course and, and, and deviate a little bit and be a little bit pragmatic during mm. your uh, bachelor thesis. I think that is a, that is a good treat, I think. Okay. So, um, so, so with planning, would that be to, to uh, like think of different actions that need to happen in a row or what, 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 is, what is planning and how can we plan for this? Yeah, ba basically, I think you should at least have a plan for the kind of like like next one or two weeks ahead. Okay. Uh, so so you so know, not over the entire. Uh, uh, at, at least weeks. yeah, sure, but at, mm. at at quite a high level. But mm. for example, if you're doing, uh, let's say, if you're doing interviews, then you probably need to have a, a, a set date. I need to have found five developers that can do the interview in this week, mm. and if that does not happen, then we need to have a contingency plan for that yeah. part. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, so you don't kind of like, oh, but they said that they will come back the week after that. And, mm. But chances are that won't happen or mm. things would get too tight in the schedule. Yeah, and, and, and like I that. think that, I mean, it's a limited project mm. time now. And we we're talking about, I mean, if it even if it seems like a long time, I think that the, the best advice I I can give is that start from the backward. Well, start at your date when, okay, this is the date where I'm going to hand in a draft to my supervisor or mm. whatever date you want to start counting. And then try to start to count backwards. Mm. Uh, and do as best as you can. And you, mm. you can find a lot of, of, of like, you can talk with other people, you can talk in, in the workshops and mm. ask your supervisor what's like a 
good amount of time. But then you'll most likely end up at a date that is, well, it's that's very soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I think it starts from, from the back. Okay, mm. here's when I'm going to be finished. And, okay. then, and then try to go, mm. uh, I think back, what it's called in uh, Baklänges engineering. <laughs> <laughs> Reverse engineering <Reverse> land. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, yeah, and you have these dates, right? They have yeah. kind of like yeah. a pretty, yeah. pretty high level plan from the course perspective yeah. at least yeah. already. So, so so shouldn't take too much. Yeah, the hand in date for the for the last version is yeah. already yeah. Uh, on the course homepage. Yeah. Yeah. So but you were talking about assumptions in the beginning and unknowns and stuff like that. How how can these be reduced? Uh, to knowns, right? Yeah, yeah, the reading background material, of course. Uh, what have other done here? What is the hard parts? What mm-hmm. are what are things that we can probably do? You can make, if you're implementing something, you can, of course, do small prototypes to test this technology that you're using so mm. that you know that it will will probably work when, when things are, are um, for real, so to speak. Um, I think that the most problematic problems are kind of like the unknown unknowns, mm-hmm. things that you don't even know that you don't know, mm-hmm. and that's that's really tough. So you can of course try to to ask your supervisor, um, but it's hard for them also. They are not kind of like gods, mm-hmm. so it's uh, it's very uh, very hard to know what you don't know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so I have a tip here, and that is to be try to be very precise in 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 how you express yourself. So you you write things down, and and then you read it and you s- make sure that every word is fully understood. Mm. And now and and <laughs> fully understood can be, or that you define the words very very carefully. So you're very precise in how you express yourself. Mm. So go from good to what good means. Mm. Yeah, it's a little bit like testing in, in, in testing a software. You can like, this should work. That's what you can like write in your requirement. But then mm. when you do the testing, you need to be very, very precise. Mm. Exactly this is what we are putting in and then exactly this should come out. So yeah. uh, you can think a little bit like that also in your wording of, of stuff. In, mm. in, uh, because it's, when you talk to a company, for example, it's very easy for them to just say some words and you kind of like just accept. Uh, but you don't really understand what these words mean. Mm. So, oh, we would like to try this. But what do you mean we try? Uh, mm. We would like to know about more about this. But what exactly is this? Mm. Uh, it's, it's good to find out as soon as possible. Yeah. So and how can you do that? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, what, what I'm, I'm, I'm like leaning towards mm. is that I think we spoke a little bit earlier is that what, what you asked me, uh, mm. what's a good project? Mm. And I thought a little bit about that. I mean, what's a good project? And I think that is different for, I mean, you, you might get a different answer for mm. whoever you ask, but you can like, my answer is that <laughs> try, to, to try to find something that, that well, uh, I think you already know that you should do something that you well, think matters. Mm-hmm. I think that, that is a good project. Um, but also something that is concrete. The more concrete it is, mm-hmm. that the, the easier it is to find those things that are knowns and unknowns. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's say that you want to well, make a survey of, 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 of how people think and uh, etc. in the industry. Uh, maybe there are a couple of unknowns there. Mm. Maybe you haven't even defined what what kind of people you're yeah. are going to ask. And then, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. And then there is still just maybe more unknowns mm. and more pitfalls. But try to be concrete. Mm. So the, the bachelor thesis doesn't need to change the world. Mm. Uh, and I, I would say that if you, you actually you're not required to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, but concrete project. Uh, Bing. Yeah. Someone got an, an SMS. I think that was me. I think it was the computer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah so I think uh, exactly being concrete. And it's again like when we develop software, we have this requirement. It's probably a little bit fuzzy. We thought we understood it when we wrote it down. Mm. Uh, but then we come to the programming part. Then we need to be this concrete. We need to actually decide exactly 
what is supposed to happen in yeah. every different case here. Yeah. yeah. So you can think a little, but try to can like use your experiences from from what you have learned and from what you have developed before. Mm -hmm. Try to apply that in, in in the project, not just the programming per se, mm -hmm. but also can kind of like the thinking that we go from a requirement that is more or less a hypothesis of how we want things to work, then we try to define that concretely mm. in our source code, and then we validate that by testing. Mm. So mm. it's, and then we find out that we did not understand yeah. the requirement mm. from the beginning, and then yeah. we need to do more. Yeah, mm. and, and one thing that I mean, also, I've, I've been, I've seen quite uh, a few uh, different uh, projects uh, and I would say that try to stick to what is the, the like the discipline so mm -hmm. if you're if you're in mm -hmm. computer science stick to computer science because you took the example of interview mm -hmm. and well you could do an like you could do a study with like seeing how people like I think there were people that were like investigating and, and trying to f find out how people think that works in the industry mm. or maybe interpret different mm. things or well and that is actually well <laughs> we're like you're actually not on mm. on the discipline you're mm. you're making a study that is well we are not experts in that mm. neither of us mm. i mean i can say for myself i've never even done an interview study mm. so being put as a supervisor for that kind of project and helping people and i would say that mm. applies for most of us um, is well not helping mm. uh, because that's when you go into social science the humanities mm. they are good at like interviewing mm. people mm. and designing those kind of studies so just think about that mm. that that of course that can be a part of the method mm. it can absolutely be that it's not like a no no mm. but try to stick to your discipline yeah. so yeah. implementing something yeah. trying to experiment trying to test yeah. mm. trying to do something that has been done in yeah. a better way mm. uh, try out different solutions that like then you're on spot mm. and then it's also concrete because those things are concrete for you they should be concrete mm. for you because that is what you should know mm. so so in other words play with your strengths right yeah, yeah. yeah. So definitely, definitely so if you've done interviews before then you can do these interviews yeah. if you haven't done them then you need to read up on it on how to do yeah. it yeah but in surveys order. and interviews these mm. when you're dealing with mm. people when mm. you're dealing with humans mm. <laughs> be no, no. careful <laughs> I, I would say, i would actually uh, advise against it in, yeah. in this mm. uh, that that is I, i'm saying also, my opinion mm -hmm. so but you come from a engineering yeah. aspect of this yes. right mm -hmm. yeah. and I, I i think that i mean we are uh, sort of all like considered to be engineers even mm. if you do a bachelor thesis and you're like get a Phil Kand. Mm. I think you're like you're aiming for engineering jobs. Mm. You're you're mm. like being viewed as an engineer. So I think that I mean the engineering approach, the engineering. Mm. So we mindset. implement something, test something. Yeah, those kind of kind of things. Yeah, would, would be good. And uh, yeah, so. Um, uh, yeah, I, I like that. Try so, to change the world to a better place by yeah. technology. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, and and then I think uh, I think in in kind of like in validation of of things, it it could it is interesting to take take one step further than than uh, the kind of like this works. I have a number that it's better. Mm. It is interesting to know how how would people or humans actually use this or perceive this yeah. mm -hmm. so i think there is a, a an interesting uh, thing to involve humans a little bit at least mm. uh, and especially maybe for this validation i know uh, if you're doing things for a company the company they want something from this and yes they might want this technical prototype but they surely also want to know what you think about this mm. with technology? What is your opinion about mm. it? Not not just that it works or not, but also was it hard? What pitfalls do you mm. see? Would how could we introduce this in our company? Mm. How could we do things 
yeah. to, to, to make things better, not just that it, it works and it has this performance or this characteristic yeah. from mm. a technical perspective. We can see directly now that there is all, already a small difference in, in what we... Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. definitely. So you shouldn't but, but, listen to yeah, one person. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I definitely think that you sh play to your strength mm. and, 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 and uh, there are, there's a lot of new stuff in the thesis course with the writing and the scientific methods and validity mm. and, and things like that. Mm. Some of it are, are you can probably pretty clearly connect to things that you have done before, mm. but to then make your thesis kind of like 90% is stuff that you haven't really touched in the education, that's a huge, huge mm. risk, of course. So, mm. I mean, there is a lot of learning that needs to happen before yeah. you can do that. Yeah. So, for these implementation projects or these, you know, applied projects or where you build something or test something. So how how can we make good theses on, on such projects or what do you consider a good thesis on a, such project? Uh, well, I, I think first you need to find this little this little aspect of of the, the problem or the technologies that you are trying to, to use that is unique in some aspect. Mm. So you, you, you do this programming thing, but yeah, people have done programming things before, but you need to find the context and the exact defined problem that is new for, for this area. Mm. So are we talking unique selling points or are, are we... What, I, yeah, what kind yeah of I, I think kind of like if you wanted to, the company X wants to try technology Y and and um, they have probably a context. Mm -hmm. Will we use this yeah. this database or this mm -hmm. uh, these server technologies or this cloud technology or whatever? And that environment could be the unique context that mm -hmm. is enough for, for the bachelor. Mm -hmm. It does not need to be a totally unique algorithm, but rather, oh, I try two algorithms to solve this problem in the context of this company and voila we know something more than about these two algorithms in this exact context and mm, yeah, that's yeah. enough knowledge to mm. pass on yeah. yeah so a good understanding on what the problem is or the context but that the problem lives in right now so how it's solved right right now mm. so i mean when working with companies it's they probably have a solution right now but that solution is not working for them mm. Uh, so we need to understand that in order to sort of introduce some new stuff, right? Indeed, indeed. Mm. Yeah, I define the problem mm. kind of like and the environment of the problem kind of exactly. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's a very, very, a very good approach. Mm -hmm. And then this combination of stuff, that's it. What makes mm. it unique mm. and, and what builds on knowledge that's already known. Okay, so so some of these students are uh, in you know uh, gonna work with companies, and some of these students are gonna approach a, a researcher in, in this department. Mm -hmm. So uh, what can you say about approaching these researchers, and what what could be a good thesis when you work with a researcher? Or what could be the pitfalls of the, of that? <laughs> that was a hard question. Yeah, it uh, is. I, I, yeah. Uh, the the pitfalls of working. Uh, it, I think I think it all depends. Of course, yeah. I think that if if um, you're working with the researcher uh, that is working in a bigger project and there mm. might be more researchers involved, and it, it might be I'm just saying that mm. if you go into that kind of project, it might be that you find it hard to to like fit in the place if if there is a bigger mm. project mm. Uh, to and then then there is. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's about framing, framing, uh, framing the problem so mm. it is a clear bachelor thesis project. From mm. that, that could that could be a pitfall, uh, I would mm. say. Uh, but I would say that this most likely should not happen mm. because we we I think we are expected at least to to uh, well uh, well <laughs> to dodge this pitfall. Uh, I would say. Mm -hmm. So understanding the, the context of the, of the problem that you're given or the sub problem that you're given, is that a big thing or? I mean, in the same way as you understood the problem or the context of the problem at the company, you need to understand. Yeah, 
That, that's actually an interesting question because, I mean, how much do you, do you actually need to understand of the basic bits and pieces mm. of what you're, you're mm. doing? And um, what I would, I would say that you should understand uh, a, a lot, but you might not understand the very deep like things mm. and I, I know this by experience but mm. because that this is often I, I can just take an example mm. I know that you talked about this exact thesis yeah. uh, last year and maybe I not mention any names but the thing is that when 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 that person dived into this subject we that person <laughs> quickly realized that okay this is this is very deep I mean mm. there's a lot of mathematics and mm-hmm. well I could spend a year and I don't really have the prerequisites mm. for understanding this but that is not a problem. If mm. you're very clear about this when you write your background, mm. that, okay, I'm going to describe it from this level, mm. and maybe you describe it from a meta level, mm. maybe, as long as you're very clear about this. Mm. So I would say that you can still maybe do something on a, like an advanced machine learning algorithm, mm. which, well, maybe you don't understand or mm. very few people do understand. Yeah, <laughs> no one understands. Yeah. <laughs> but, that that could still mm. be okay. Mm. Uh, you could still write like uh, how it works, mm-hmm. uh, how it's supposed to work, and like how generally it is supposed to function, even mm. though you maybe may not understand everything. Yeah. So, so, but so, it, so you need that, to be that, clear about that 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 means that you need to understand what you need to understand, right? Again, yeah. Yeah. Make it yeah. Yeah. Ma- make it clear what uh, and yeah. not have any unknowns anymore. <laughs> Bit, uh, yes, <laughs> so, so I think mm. it's still wrong. <laughs> so understanding the frames of what you do yeah. compared to what that researcher's bigger picture is. Yeah, right? yeah. And and so I've I've had a couple of these where where the student feel that they don't really fully understand what is expected of them from the researcher. Mm. Uh, and, and I think that this might be a thing that you really need to be honest when you talk to the, this person or this company, uh, so that you perhaps they are giving you a lot of things, mm. uh, and then you try to understand uh, those but when you go from the meeting you don't understand yeah. and then you need to be brave enough to ask the correct questions so that you really yeah, really yeah, understand yeah. what is at Def- what definitely is expected I, I think uh, one thing in, in in some projects that i have have seen is that students don't really realize some students don't realize when they need to ask questions. Mm. They try to solve a problem or try to understand something for far too long on Mm. their own. And well, time runs out Mm. in these projects. So it's, it's much better for you to, uh, to ask uh, early Mm. and ask often. So that yeah, it's this iterative approach that we have been been talking about in your projects and stuff like that, that you need to go and do the feedback cycle mm. over and over again. And the harder the problem is to understand, the more you need to do this, the tighter this loop needs to be. Mm. Uh, because chances are that you did not get things right. You did mm. not understand the first time. Mm. And if you work on that tangent that where you didn't understand, the, you will kind of like end up here instead of here. So, so how mm. can we make this a process so that, it, you know, how can we what what kind of advice, concrete advice, can we give these students? Yeah, tight iterations. Book book mm. a meeting with your, your mm. customer in in mm. in, in, in e- even in, if this in, customer is a researcher, yeah, yeah, right? Definitely, or if the, it's definitely. the company. Yeah. yeah. So and uh, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Uh, so uh, tight meetings. Mm. Yeah. Like and then try to make the meetings concrete as yeah. well. So, so don't book a meeting without mm. an agenda. Mm. Mm. And. And I always, and this might also differ, but I always tell the students I supervise that Mm. you are in charge of Mm. your project Mm. and I don't want you to book a meeting with me without you setting the agenda. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, and and I think that try try to take that advice that you should Mm. be setting the agenda for the Mm. meetings. Mm. Um, And if, and that's also a good, having a meeting without a purpose is Mm. waste of time. Yeah. So... I usually say that, okay, they they collect data, so to speak, they they try to understand together, Mm -hmm. right? But then they should write that down. And then they should formulate that in a very precise manner. 
and then they should retell that perhaps the next meeting mm-hmm. or perhaps after the meeting they send an email or yeah, yeah, yeah. a Slack message. Okay, was it this we decided? Mm. So that when they put it in writing, suddenly these unknowns or these assumptions are clear. Mm. And perhaps you can go through your words and find those blurry words that mm. are not so yeah, clear. Yeah, yeah. I would even at least try to make it even more concrete. Do, do the part that you discussed. Mm. Collect the real data and mm. make sure that data makes sense. Or when you try to implement this or whatever you are doing, you will probably find out that, oh, oh this part what about that? Is so you that start working part? really early? Is that? I, I think mm. so. Mm. It's it's often better to start early than, mm. than late because it's it's when you hit the metal, so to speak. It's when you're implement, writing the if statements. Mm. That's when you really know what you know and you know what you don't know. And then you make assumptions when you implement mm. and those assumptions are sometimes correct if you really understand stuff but chances are that they are not okay awesome mm. so any final advice for these students um, um, try to limit limit the scope mm-hmm. uh, so that this is possible uh, try to remove as many unknown things as possible so uh, an example could be, oh, I want to do something with machine learning or deep learning and stuff like that. Uh, I would like to try this new algorithm. Mm. I've never done it before. I don't have the data. Then you, you will probably not make it in these weeks because mm. just collecting the data is, yeah. is mm. a project yeah. in its own yeah. uh, and a pretty boring project probably. Yeah. So concrete understanding. Yeah, yeah. I, I will just... I agree. <laughs> so, and also, if I might like, be concrete, try to try to limit the project to something that also aligns with your strengths, but mm. also your motives. Like your, you should be, you should be want to do this. You should mm. actually try to find some motivation for this, not just getting a grade, even mm. though that is a motivation good enough, I mm. guess. But. Mm. Um, and then I just be careful about machine learning projects. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 that's also a point for <laughs> <laughs> super fun, mm-hmm. yeah, super, uh, but, uh, but yeah, hard. but uh, the data is probably the most. You need the, the data, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, upfront. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck.